Okay. Oh, this is cool. This is cooling. This is metal. Oh, oh my god. Oh, this is so surprising. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, ah. <laughs> what a very peculiar, peculiar, peculiar. What a very interesting and an intriguing lip oil. Ah, with a metal tip. Hmm. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Hello gorgeous beautiful stars, <laughs> Paris Star Channel here welcomes you with a new and possibly a very exciting episode guys, third promised episode of Hourglass. <laughs> I guess we're closing, we're getting to a close. We had a chance to test a very unique extraordinary veil collection, then we passed into a super famous ambient collection and today we're diving into the third collection, a very famous collection from Hourglass and that collection is called Vanish. Is it going to this collection make me vanish or is it something that's going to make me vanish? We shall see. Guys, when it comes to these products we have a lot. We have a Vanish primer and then we have a vanish uh, foundation, then we have a vanish concealer, and then even we have uh, a non vanish, but we have a lip product, and of course, we're going to come back to the ambient powders to give ourselves a little bit of a color. And we have some tools, guys, we have some tools in the form of a brushes, foundation brush, the, the concealer brush, and the uh, precise brush we have it all so yes guys if this is something that interests you please tune in to my channel to the party where we celebrate diversity because guys diversity makes us all different gorgeous and beautiful let's start today's episode today's episode is all about the hourglass and it's unique and one of its kind <laughs> Vanish Collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright guys, so here we are back ready to play with makeup. Hourglass Cosmetics with its unique Vanish Collection. Let's see how it's going to look like and how it is going to perform on my skin. I'm actually very curious. But before we're going to jump into anything, let's first talk about a little bit about the foundation and it's, guys, this foundation, the Hourglass uh, Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Stick. So guys, first what we're going to do, let's jump quickly into the Hourglass official website and read what the website can say about this foundation. So guys, right now you can see um, the details. Let's read and go quickly through the details. Uh, a, revo a re revolutionary foundation stick with the coverage of a concealer, the fluidity of a liquid and the weight lessness of a powder in a long wearing waterproof formula for undetectable full coverage. Gee, okay. The, unpresent, the unprecedented concentration of pigment in this foundation provides maximum coverage with minimum product, concealing all discoloration and imperfections for flawless skin with a seamless finish. Winner of the best foundation installed 2017. 2017, this is an old foundation, guys. Reader's Choice Awards. Then when it comes to features and benefits, a foundation and concealer in one. A concealer in one. Well, I suppose back then they did not really have a concealer, so they kind of encouraged people to use this as a foundation and concealer. Cool. So... Uh, a foundation and concealer in one, this concentrated formula contains double the amount of pigment versus traditional foundations for instant coverage in one application. Well, the formulations of a foundations, they're changing. If you would try the Charlotte Tilbury full coverage foundation, you would be shook how much pigment there can be in the one single drop. Anyway, I digress. Let's continue. 
long wearing waterproof formula provides 12 hour coverage. We shall check it out. Innovative formula adjust to your body temperature to effortlessly blend into the skin. Designed specifically to be used with the Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Brush for the most seamless finish. I have the brush. We're going to check this combo. <laughs> Available in 32 shades to perfectly match every skin tone. Hourglass, are you kidding me? Your undertones are the most powerful and just sophisticated, should we say, undertones in the whole white world when it comes to the foundation. <laughs> it gives me a giggle. Uh, vegan and cruelty free. Clinical results. Uh, well, they did a co one week consumer study, not a long, uh, on women. On the women? <gasps> Why not on Why not on a man? <laughs> okay. Um, so people has reported that the product is easy and fast to use and apply. So uh, people saw an instant improvement in skin appearance. Obviously, if you have a me medium to full coverage and you cover everything, there is an improvement. Uh, if, if people uh, well reported effectively covered redness and skin imperfections, blended seamlessly into their own skin. Uh, product effectively covered skin discoloration, pores, blemishes, and dark uh, under eye circles, and covered hyperpigmentation and dark spots. Interesting. And then we have something like the formulated without. What is this formulation formulated without? It's parabens, fragrance, gluten, sulfates, nanoparticles, phthalates, <laughs> synthetic dyes, GMO, GMOs in a foundation. Not tested on animals. We are proud to be a cruelty free brand. Good. Guys, in that case, I'm always doing, I'm going to check you. I'm going to check you. So guys, we're going to have a look into the ingredients list and have a little bit of a chit chat. Disclaimer, I am not any expert when it comes to the formulations. My own opinion, I create based on my own research while I prepare for my uh, episodes. Uh, there is a vast knowledge on internet and if you want, there is a lot of knowledge on the internet. I, uh, through my channel and my own personal opinion, I am trying to raise an awareness so that you know what are you putting on your face and keeping on your f on your face for hours. There are lots of uh, comments and people that are asking me what are you doing to your skin so that your skin looks like this. And me, personally, what I do, I look into the ingredients. I do look into the ingredients and whenever there are co ingredients that I assume as controversial, I'm trying to kind of stay away from them. Um, I am guilty of charge. Sometimes I am using it, but most of the time I'm trying to use products with good ingredients. And I guess my skin is very happy because of that. It thanks me about that. So this uh, last night I had a retinal night and this is how my skin looks like. My skin is already prepped and primed with Charlotte Tilbury products uh, for makeup and a little bit of a sunscreen. And yeah, I'm over 40 years old and this is how my skin looks like because I pay attention to the ingredients and through my channel and through the information that I'm passing on to you, I'm trying to raise an awareness so that you can have your own opinion and decide if it's important for you or not. Guys, good. That was a long digression. So guys, right now you can actually see the uh, ingredients list for my shade of the foundation. My shade is vanilla. So let's start, uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the ingredients here, right over here. I marked some in the green as the green light. I mark some as the orange awareness and I marked some uh, of the red super extra awareness. Whatever you're gonna do with this, it's your own personal thing. That's totally fine. 
good guys so let's jump into uh, from the beginning so when we have uh, the hourglass vanish foundation ingredients we start with caprylic capric tree glycerid and it's a good news because it is an emollient and brings moisture to the skin then we have something like Euphorbia cerifera candelilla wax candelilla cera what it is it is a candelilla wax sourced from the candelilla shrub candelilla wax is a versatile versatile plant-based wax often used as a vegan alternative to beeswax due to its versatile textural property but candelilla wax has many functions in cosmetic products including working as a thickener emollient plasticizer and modifier good then we have an ingredient that is called cerecin and cerecin acts as a viscosity controlling and emulsion stabilizing agent in cosmetics and personal care products as a wax it aids the hardening of lipid oil based products like balm or pomade Additionally, it lessens brittleness and gives various stick cosmetics strength and stability. What does Teresin do in a formulation? It is antistatic, emulsion stabilizing and viscosity controlling. Then we have something like its microcrystalline wax, Cera microcrystallina. And this one is marked in orange. And allow me to explain. First. What is Cera Microcrystallina used for? Cera Microcrystallina or Microcrystalline Wax is a very essential ingredient in the world of makeup that gives the product its shape and texture. Microcrystalline Wax in cosmetics works primarily as a thickening agent that gives a solid smooth feel to the cosmetic formulation. Cera microcrystallina can also be found in skincare products primarily to control the viscosity of the formulation. This ingredient can soften the outer layers of the skin by keeping it moisturized and preventing water loss from its surface. Origin Cera microcrystallina is a type of hydrochiron wax that is made by de-oiling petroleum. It is a highly refined ingredient that is produced as a part of the petroleum refining process. What does a microcrystallina cera do in a formulation? Viscosity controlling. And guys, this is marked in orange because it is a controversial um, ingredient because it is considered that it can be comedogenic because of its film creating features. It creates a film and it is considered that is possible that it can be comedogenic. So that is my information for you. Everyone is different. Everyone has a different skin type, but that's why I marked it in orange. And now we are jumping into the red awareness, super awareness ingredient, which is called the BHT. BHT. And guys, I'm not going to scare everyone away because of that ingredient. You, I want you to have your own opinion. My, uh, my channel is all about the awareness and about sharing my own personal opinion about that ingredient. So guys, to be the most reliable in what I want to pass about this ingredient, I actually am showing you right now a screenshot from the website millionmarker.com and read, let's read it together what the millionmarker.com can say about the BHT ingredient. The most important thing is, is BHT safe? This chemical is commonly used as a preservative in cosmetics and foods. However, General Mills started removing BHT from their cereal and uh, overgrowing health concerns. In vivo, tests suggest that the BHT preservative is bad for you. BHT may act as an endocrine disruptor and damage healthy cells. Million Marker recommends avoiding BHT products. Health impacts of BHT products. 
Some animal studies have shown BHD as an endocrine disruptor that has toxic effects on the liver, lungs, kidney, blood system and reproductive system. As an endocrine disruptor, it can impact testosterone levels as well as affect no. <laughs> quality. Another reason why BHD isn't good for you is that it might cause enlargements in the liver, inflammatory effects in the lungs, renal dysfunction and decrease its potassium level. So that's what we can actually read about the BHD from this website. And then Basically, what is this uh, this ingredient? BHT butylated hydroxytolen is a human-made chemical used as a preservative in foods and cosmetics. So that's that's what I wanted to pass you. Whatever you'll think about it, if it's important for you to know, now you know. And then we have another ingredient that is called Elysium Verum fruit extract, which is. Uh, which is anise fruit, fruit extract that is also known as an aniseed. It can have potent antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal and antioxidant properties of fruit extracts and or essential oil determine the use of this species in the products of cosmetics. Then we have something like macadamia seed oil. And macadamia, macadamia nut oil is high in monosaturated fatty acids and contains vitamin E, uh, which are natural antioxidants. These antioxidants can reduce inflammation and oxidative stress of the skin. This vegetable oil can penetrate the skin because of the components in, in it that are similar to, similar to the skin's natural oil and serve to maintain moisture and nourish the skin. Macadamia nut oil often uh, used as a skincare product and anti-aging and it's safe to be made as a cosmetic product. Great ingredient in this foundation. Then we have something like phenoxyethanol and phenoxyethanol today in the year of 2023 has an opinion of being controversial. That's why it's marked an orange because it is considered, has an opinion, to be an endocrine disruptor. Although the phenoxyethanol and the presence of the phenoxyethanol is important to preserve the product, to keep the life of the product uh, longer, to prevent it from spoilage. And then we have something like propanediol. What is propanediol? Propanediol is a natural origin solvent. It can provide moisture to skin and help active ingredients penetrate deeper into skin. Then we have talc and talc can have a controversial opinion in 2023 as well because, well, the talc is a mineral and talc itself, it's fine. It's cool. But certain, uh, certain tests has shown that talc can have an extra mineral inside which is asbestos and asbestos has an opinion to be carcinogenic so that's why lots of brands these days they are changing the formulation like dior they're changing everything they're changing everything and trying to get rid of the products that contains talc because well when we see talc we don't know we actually don't know if talc that we having contain uh, you uh, has asbestos or not we would have to use it in the laboratory to check it out there are different sources of talc from all over, all over the world because talc is being excavated from all over the world and there are certain places in the world when talc might be contaminated uh, with asbestos and there are certain parts of the world that talc is absolutely beautiful and clean that's why the talc is a controversial ingredient according to the opinion of the internet in the year 2023. And then we have uh, iron oxidides and titanium oxidide is basically the pigment. So guys, the class is closed. This is what I have to say about the ingredients. Whatever you're going to do with it, it's yours.
I'm, as I'm repeating myself, I'm raising an awareness. Um, as you can see, this is a very old formulation. Back in the past, no one was ever even thinking about creating light cover or super light cover foundation or skin tints filled with moisture and with good ingredients. No one was even thinking about it. And back then, even the world would have not been interested in such products, I believe. Back in the past, five years ago and longer, people were interested in a great coverage, super coverage and uh, longevity. That's why these products has been formulated and this foundation has been pro formulated the way you have seen it and the way I have talked about it. Some brands, they're kind of reformulating their products, like Dior again. Uh, from the most beautiful classic foundations that were just looking beautiful and lasted long to the formulas that are much more friendly to your skin. Some people like it, some people don't like it. Some people don't care what they put on their face and keeping for hours. Some people do care. It's a very controversial subject that we could talk about for hours and hours. Um, I'm just sharing my own personal opinion so that you are aware what are you wearing on your face. Guys, good. So I guess when it comes to the theory, the class is closed. And right now, let's go into the most pleasant and fun part of the episode, which is application of the makeup. All right, guys. So... It is time now to play with makeup. By the way, my skin is prepped and primed. There is a Charlotte Tilbury Magic Elixir. There is a best moisturizer that I can have for my skin, which is Charlotte Tilbury Magic Screen and some protection, a filter, an SPF. That is one of my favorites adapted to my skin and my needs. And this, guys, is how it looks like. I had a night with retinol, so my skin is new and fresh. I'm over 40 years old and my skin is normal to dry. So yes, we're ready to play guys with makeup. So let's start first with a primer guys. So there you have it, there, uh, there is a primer, Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. <laughs> this is how the product looks like. And um, there is a 30 milliliter of product and it has 12 months of the longevity. So we've already tested the Veil primer and it wasn't one of my favorites. It was super silicone-y. Let's try this one and see. So when you open, there is a beautiful, I mean this aesthetics, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, combination with white and gold this is something that I like a lot and this is the pump so I am going just to use the primer just strategically not all over my face because I have a very nice and beautiful glow so I don't want to ruin that I just want to put uh, the primer in the places where I have most of the texture which is basically here in this area so let's squeeze it This is the consistency. Okay, creamy. Good. I thought um, I am. Um, uh, oh my gosh, we lost some light and now we, there is a change. I'm filming in natural light. So however a light is happening, this is the camera, how it's picking it up. Good guys. Um, so it is quite creamy, actually. I thought it might be a little bit like more serum like. I, I don't know what I'm doing. The consistency is rather more creamy. Silicone as well, but not as much as it was with the Veil Primer. And it is slightly, no, not even slightly. It is certainly mattifying and blurring and smoothing. I can feel it. I can feel it and I can see it at the same time. Yep. Good. Guys, this is how it looks like. Definitely it is on that kind of a silicone side, but not as much as the veil. 
This one is definitely gentler. There is a very nice consistency and a definitely a visible blur and definitely um, you, I can feel a little bit of a smoothness. Good. So I suppose we're ready now to play with the foundation. And this is the foundation, guys. Hourglass, vanish, a seamless finish foundation stick. And I don't know if you can see it, but mine is in the shade, vanilla. This is how the product looks like. And in here we have 7.2 grams of the product and the longevity is 16 months. Good. We've already analyzed the ingredients list. Um, they propose to use it as well as the concealer. I am not going to use this product as a concealer. For me, product that has BHT in, it, in its ingredients list, I don't think that I that I would put such product in my under eye area. We have a concealer, so we're going to to see it, you know, the foundation was created back in the time when the hourglass didn't really have a very good concealer. So that's why they proposed probably to put it in the under eye area. Anyway, I digress. Let's check, uh, let's check this out. And this is the foundation. This is the foundation. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the aesthetics of the hourglass, it's absolutely beautiful. So I guess some brands can learn from, from the best how to create a plastic product. I mean, how to create a product and put it in a plastic that still looks extremely beautiful and luxurious. This is glossy and this is the product. Awesome. Good. And guys, they proposing to use it with a special brush. And I have this brush so that we can have the most accurate application. And it is right over here. And it is the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Brush. This is how the product looks like. And yes, as I've said, I'm, I'm always, I'm not always, but I'm trying sometimes to be extra and I'm going for tools. I guess when it comes to tools from Hourglass, I was always very curious about these tools. Um, for me, there, there seem to be very attractive, <laughs> should I say? So yes, I do have this brush and let's go into unboxing and see what is this brush all about. All right, guys, I think, well, the brush is very nice, I guess. I just have beside me the, the brush from the Ambient collection, if you would like to compare. Both of them, they're very nice. This one like looks like a thumb. This one is completely different. It's rather more like a Kabuki type of a brush. We're going to see. We're going to check this out. So, yes, let's take now the foundation and... Let's apply to the half, uh, to to the one half of my face and have the comparison about the coverage. This is the vanilla, um, and yeah, let's see. Let's go with the flow. Okay, okay, very creamy, good. I am not a very big fan of the of the full coverage. So first, I'm going to do something like this. It is very interesting because you turn this and then it comes out and then you can 
hide it completely. And let's check with this brush how it is going to look like. Okay, I mean, something is blending, but um, I think I need more. <laughs> I don't know. I was expecting some sort of a super coverage. No. Do you know, sometimes I like to do something like this. Sometimes I like to do something like that. Uh, I'm taking the brush and I'm actually coating the brush with a foundation, just like so. And I think it is much more practical. And now... I can dot it all over my face, just like so. And now I can blend it and I think this is much more efficient type of a way of the application. Yeah, and now I can see the coverage. Okay, maybe I even put too much on the brush. The, with a brush, it's blending really very nice. It is emollient as the stick foundation and it gives me a very nice coverage. Good. By the way, guys, the temperature in the studio. <laughs> it is really difficult to apply any kind of a makeup because everything is just melting. I mean, uh, it's it's cool. Like We can be happy because we have summer. But um, these days, uh, the summer, the summertime is intense, guys. <laughs> it's intense. Anyway, I think... We have it applied. I don't need more than this. As you can see, this is how, you know, the, the vanilla looks like. It's it's not necessarily my undertone. But then to find a good undertone is just a challenge. So allow me to approach so that you can see it. This is the face that looks... See? <laughs> but uh, it's okay. We're going to use some finishing powders and we're going to balance that out so this is how it looks like when covered and this is the uncovered face the reality of a person that is over 40 years old so yeah side by side from a close-up what i can see i can see uh well very good coverage by the way i put it too much but um very nice coverage i see some blur i see some smooth what is covered is covered, what is not covered, it's not covered, but I like it. So far, so good. Good. I'm going to take some more on the brush and maybe try to put a little bit lighter layer because I think that I just coated the brush too heavily so that we can have a look. Yes, you can definitely ha can have a lighter coverage if you want to. I just, you know, I just... Go with the flow. I didn't know what to, what to expect. See? Already it looks very nice. I don't really have to put a lot. But then I need to kind of like balance this. Because this is too intense. Good. I It is, it is very... I mean, very pigmented, I suppose. And... What I'm trying to say, you don't really need a lot. Allow me to clean this. Good. You don't really, guys, need a lot to have a good coverage. When it comes to the finish, it is rather goes on a matte side, but um, I would say the satin matte, not the matte matte. Um, I. I don't know. I It's really hard to say these days. It, do we still have a foundation that are like really flat matte? All of them, they're kind of satin matte, luminous. And this is the one. Maybe it's because of the of what is layering. Because uh, what I'm trying to say, because I have hundreds of thoughts, guys. Um, when, you, when I use magic cream and magic crystal elixir, it always gives me a glow. When I top it with the SPF, it always gives me a glow. So whatever I'm putting on it, it kind of takes that glow uh, and you can actually see it. So yes, I guess when it comes to the foundation, guys, the foundation is applied and this is how it looks like. Good. Right now, let's jump into the next part, which would be the concealer. So where is it? There it is. Good. 
there it is guys and it is the hourglass vanish airbrush concealer and mine is in the shade creme this is how the product looks like and i suppose back in the past it was a very 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 viral product and was considered as the one of the best concealers back then and well i can understand that the you know the competition back then wasn't really <laughs> there was not a lot of a competition these days i have impression that at least once per month there is a new concealer there are so many so many of the products that are coming out and you know they're trying to attack our coins <laughs> now our wallets <laughs> but um i what i'm trying to say it's fun because then i can actually get these products have some fun with makeup and talk about them for you guys so um i digress uh let's let's take out the concealer and this is how the concealer looks like in the shade creme before i'm going to apply it actually guys as you know i'm extra so i wanted to have a brush that would has been designed to apply with this concealer and there it is guys the brush it is called a van uh, hourglass vanish seamless finish concealer brush this is how the product looks like and yeah let's get into the unboxing and let's see what is this brush all about um and is it going to change the application let's see let's find out <laughs> so there it is Ta -da! very interesting very well protected so now i'm going to take this and i'm going to take this okay very interesting oh good there is a very interesting weight to this brush i can't explain it as if something has been put in here on purpose to make it a little bit heavy this is how the brush looks like and as you can see it is cut there uh, you know the bk beauty has no brushes and one of the brushes for concealer is very very famous and almost sold out most of the time i guess the hourglass was first <laughs> they're very similar when it comes to the, to the shape but you know who wouldn't like to inspire themselves on the best brands <laughs> um so i digress anyway this is the brush very interesting and is some weight that me it makes this brush really very pleasant to hold good and that's the the concealer i'm very curious about this concealer so there it is what i'm trying what i'm going to do i'm just going to do like one two three dots if i'll need more i'll apply more but we'll see okay so i'm taking the brush and let's get into the blending the shade creme is definitely very nice brightening type of a of a shade it blends very nicely but then again i think that the vanilla that i chose the shade it is too dark i should pick up something that would be rather more um this is like almost like a medium the vanilla so i suppose it is my fault for picking up the wrong shade when it comes to uh, to the foundation but then again look it is orangey orangey kind of like a warm tone finding the right shade in hourglass complexion is a real battle <laughs> it's a real challenge by the way let's go back to the concealer it has blended beautifully guys so allow me to approach so that you can see it this is how it looks like the eye that is concealed and the eye that is not concealed good i mean so far so good is it creasing i have lots of fine lines and wrinkles for me my under eye area is the most challenging area that you can have 
<laughs> but yeah, we shall see. We shall try. We shall see the longevity and whatnot. I guess these three dots, they were absolutely fine, absolutely perfect. So I'm going to do this again in over here. There is a right pigmentation, but the concealer doesn't feel heavy. And this is very, very good as well, because sometimes, guys, the concealers, they're just so heavy. I actually look now at the pigmentation and I'm and I'm getting to the point that maybe even the two dots, this is, this is a pigmented concealer. Even the two dots will be more than enough. The brush is super nice to blend, absolutely. It, it's like a finger. Um, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you're watching my channel, if you're not watching, it's totally fine, but I like to apply the concealers with my finger and melt the formula with the temperature of my, uh, of my skin, blended it all together, but this brush is very nice. The shape, as you can see, it's almost like a finger, it can get everywhere. A little bit on my eyelids, we will see. Good. Everything blended really very nicely. Although I have a little bit of a reversed panda eyes, <laughs> but this is a normal thing because, well, in my opinion, the, the, the concealer creme is my shade, but the foundation is a little bit too dark. My fault, my bad. We're gonna try to use some finishing powders to balance that out. Good. Guys, I am going to now set one of my under eye area to see how it is going to look like and perform with the concealer. And I am going to be absolutely honest with you, I am going to cheat. And I am going to use the powder that I know that is the best. Because if I want to have a reliable test for the concealer, I don't want to use the powder that I don't know how it acts. I want to use the powder that I know that it's not going to be, if something is going to go wrong, it's not going to be the powder's fault, it's going to be the concealer's fault. What I'm trying to say is I'm going to use the Pat McGrath Labs, the powder from the under eye area, and I am going to use a special brush from Hourglass. I was always curious about this brush, and it is the Hourglass number 14 detail setting brush. This is how the product looks like, and it is supposed to be that kind of a brush that is supposed to have a special shape and is supposed to very nicely um, set those kind of like precise in the pre precise areas. What I'm trying to say, let me just allow me just to unbox it so you'll understand what I'm trying to say. This is the brush. Very nice packaging, very nice protection in here. And the hourglass. Awesome. Very interesting. Very nice, very interesting. It's new, so it's still closed. It's not open. Don't. And yeah, we will try to set my under eye area with that brush. Let's let's have a look if something has happened. Okay. I'm very impressed. Since that time that we spoke, nothing really has happened. And I have impression that the concealer has set on its own, which is a very good news. The coverage is very good as well. Still, I want to see how it is going to uh, react this concealer with a little bit of a powder. So I'm going to take the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder. I think we have we have quite a lot and I'm going to set it, okay? Just like so. And then we'll see how it is going to look and how it is going to act. I'm going to take this, uh, this powder a little bit more on the brush and set the areas, the T-zone basically, just like over here. Very interesting brush, very nice, very precise as they saying, as they claiming. Good. 
and I guess the whiteness a little bit of that powder from Pat McGrath kind of like tones down the yellowness of the foundation. Very cool. And a little bit here. Okay. I want to, to leave my cheeks glowy, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Good. All right, very interesting brush, and I like the handle. There is something, some heaviness in here. I, I wonder. The same thing comes with a with a with a concealer. They're they're kind of heavy. <laughs> ah. Anyway, guys, allow me to approach so that you can see how the makeup looks so far. <laughs> okay, guys, I had to have a little bit of a break um, uh, because of the temperature <laughs> thing, and then I had a chance actually to stand in front of the mirror and not in front of the camera when I'm looking at myself. And what I must say is that my camera definitely now amplifies the warm tone. The foundation in the shade Vanilla is not really that warm tone as you can see in the camera. Absolutely not. But then I cannot actually show you it differently. Maybe if I'm going to let, allow me to see some, to, to show you something. Ah, now you can see it. This is the reality. Uh, this is rather how it looks like. It's not as warm tone, but then the autofocus and everything changes on its own. It's automatically. So now you can see it. Now when I'm going to focus on my face, it the camera actually amplifies the warm tone. So please excuse me for my hardware. <laughs> Anyway guys, okay, allow me now to approach so that you can see how the complexion looks like. The foundation with the concealer that has not been set and the foundation with the concealer that it has been set. It is definitely quite impressive formula. It covers, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't crease. I am quite impressed so far how it is going to look like, the longevity, we're going to see, we are going to find out. Good. We're almost done, okay? We're almost done, so let's just add a little bit of a colors and I am going to use one of my old ambient palette from Hourglass. This is how the product looks like and this palette is really very old because it's the Ambient Lightning Edit Volume 4. I am a very sentimental when it comes to the makeup, when it comes to certain products and especially face palettes. And since I haven't used it all up, why not going, uh, why not going back to it and using it? On top of that, I am going to use a little bit as well of the second palette that is ambient and it is the Ambient Lightning Edit Universe. This is how the product looks like. And in here from this palette, what I'm going to do, what I would like to do is to start from the finishing powder that is definitely very unique. And I don't know if I've ever seen it ever after, uh, if not only in, in this palette, it is a finishing powder, infinity powder. Very interesting. Good. I'm going to take the veil brush. Oh my gosh, I love these brushes. This is the precise, this is the fluffy brush. So what, I, what I've said, I'm going to take this, uh, this finishing powder, coat it with a veil brush and do it something like this. So that I will not be super glowy, but I will still be quite radiant. As you can see, it gives me that kind of a beautiful radiance. It smooths, it blurs. And this is the effect that I can have while using the uh, ambient uh, powders from the hourglass. I love it. I really love the effect. 
As I was trying to say in the previous episodes, the, the powder formulas, especially the ambient formulas, are one of its kind. You can put them, you can layer them, and they're still invisible while giving you this kind of an incredible radiance. I love that effect. I love that effect. Good, now I'm going to take the gra grab this kind of a super old uh, hourglass palette and they have a very interesting here um, highlighters and the blush. So what I'm going to do, I'm first, I'm going to take the precise tip of the, uh, of the veil brush, take a little bit of a highlighter right over here, although I am already beautifully glowy and apply a little bit more of the highlight. Oh. Oh. oh, wow, how pretty, how pretty that is. Good, love that, love the effect, impressed. Awesome, and now I'm going to take this beautiful blush right over here. And gently, apply it to my cheeks. I like this formulation as well because it won't hurt you. You know, it is it is nicely pigmented buildable, but it's not like over pigmented, which means that you have control. I'm going to apply a little bit in here as well because of the you know, of that kind of a summer effect and a little bit of a, like a burned uh, bridge of your nose. God, I mean, the, the hourglass vanish. Not bad at all. Combined with the ambient powders, no bad, not bad at all. Good. Enough of the powders, enough of everything. Right now, allow me to take everything off, do some finishing touches, and I'll be back with the first check-in. All right, guys, and so here we are with almost finished look, because I would have forgot about the last product that I would like to talk about, a super luxurious product from Hourglass, and it's this one, which is the Hourglass number 28 lip, treatment treatment treat 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 sorry leap lip treatment oil and mine is in the shade nocturnal Ooh. this is how the product looks like and um i guess um i'm a very big fan of the lip glosses and of the lip oils everything that is plumping for my lips i love it with the lipsticks, not necessarily, because sometimes they might have too much of a pigment, while usually the lip oil is kind of like transparent. It gives a little bit of a color, but it's not super punchy, colorful. So I was very intrigued about this product, 7.5 milliliters, and we have six months of the longevity. And I must say that in this particular situation, I'm a sucker when it comes to guys the, the packaging absolutely <laughs> when it comes to the packaging i am a sucker because look at this <laughs> uh -huh. i mean guys oh my gosh what is this so beautiful incredible and then there is a window in here so that you can see the oil it's already very dark berry <laughs> so we will see we'll see i don't even know how to open should i press it is this look at this <laughs> it looks like a button right over here to press the oil let's see let's give it a go let's give it a whirl is it a button <gasps> yes okay we need to pump it <gasps> what okay it's too much Okay, oh wow, oh, can you see the oil? Okay, it is quite liquidy. <gasps> mm. Okay, oh, this is cool, this is cooling, this is metal, oh, oh my god, oh, this is so surprising, <laughs> I didn't know, oh, ah, 
<laughs> what a very peculiar, peculiar, peculiar. What a very interesting and an intriguing lip oil. Ah, with a metal tip. Hmm. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's continue with the application. Uh -huh. Oh, very unusual. Oh my gosh. Okay. Hmm. Very nourishing oil. There is some some sort of a taste to it. Not very big fan of it. There was some left of the oil in here, but ah. Uh, hmm. Very nice. Very interesting uh, formula. The, um, my lips are not sticky. Look. They're not sticky at all. Uh, I'm gonna wipe now uh, the, the tip. The tip is metallic, which is quite cooling to the lip. It glides with the oil on your lips. Absolutely incredible. Very pleasant. And as you can see that nocturnal shade. It's not a shade. I mean, it looks pretty. Guys, so allow me now to approach so that you can see the whole Vanish collection with a little bit extra um, in a full glory. So this is how it looks like. Oh my gosh, there is a blur, there is a smooth, there is a coverage, a little bit too much coverage for my own personal taste because it's definitely straight away a medium coverage. I prefer light to medium, but then I cannot be mad how it looks like. And then the concealer that is set and concealer that is not set. It tries to have the crease absolutely minimalistic. And guys, this is how it looks like. Okay, so right now that was the first check-in and right now let's go outside and see how this makeup is going to look like in the natural light and then let's meet once again in studio to have the last and final check-in and my final thoughts about the product from Hourglass, the Vanish. The Vanish. <laughs> the Vanish collection. So guys, yes, let's go outside and see how this makeup is looking in the natural light. Hello, gorgeous, beautiful star. <laughs> Paris star channel here welcomes you with this check-in in the natural light. And my, oh my, is the natural light really <laughs> today beautiful and stunning. So let's use that opportunity to our advantage so that I can show you how the makeup, the Hourglass Veil, Vanish. The Hourglass Vanish looks in its natural glory. Allow me to approach. And guys, this is how it looks like. The primer, the foundation, the blush, the finishing powder, the highlighter. And now when it comes to the concealer, well, not as good as the foundation and the concealer that has been powdered, not as good either. But I suppose if you would see me from afar, it looks cute. But then when it comes to the close up, the foundation with a primer looks absolutely silence. What is happening? Oh my God, look at this, the bird like that. Flow. <laughs> Concentration. The foundation with a primer and with the powders look good, but the concealer I have a mixed feelings, but we will have to wait for a final check-in that is going to happen by the end of the day. Right now it is um, 4.30 almost in the afternoon, so it's like the middle of the day. We still have to wait a few more hours until the end of the day for a final check-in. So guys, that would be all when it comes to this second check-in in the natural light. As you can see, the natural light is really beautiful. This is how the makeup Hourglass Vanish presents itself in the natural light. And right now, let's go back to the studio for a final third check-in, the longevity check-in, and my final thoughts about the whole collection from Hourglass Vanish. Hello, gorgeous, beautiful stars. <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a third and final check-in by the end of the day. And literally, it is by the end of the day, guys, because it is almost 
11 in the evening we're almost just about to wrap this day to end this day and i guess i have been wearing this makeup for more or less 10 hours i totally lost the track of time so um allow me to present myself and show you how this makeup from hourglass from the vanish collection is going to look like after more or less 10 hours of wearing it and um i don't know what is happening what kind of magic is happening here in the studios with the lights that's why i do not like to film in the late evenings uh, with a artificial light i prefer to film it with a natural light because this light is really very flattering and um, i guess the camera cannot pick up the nuances the little things the little details that i see when i look right here in the mirror i don't see that camera is actually picking it up but allow me to approach and talk about these cosmetics and these products one by one so this is how the makeup looks like of course the ambient finishing powders they are the stars they are absolutely the stars and then the primer the um, uh, the foundation the concealer this is the set under eye area so that you can have a look this is non-set um this is how it all presents so guys um allow me to talk with the products one by one and have the summary so first let's start with a primer the vanish primer for me personally in the beginning after application i definitely saw some mattifying some blur and some smoothness but this is basically if i can say a pure silicone base there are no real skin cares there are nothing beneficial to that skin apart from the fact that the silicone might lock any kind of a moisture that you put underneath and that you put before this is the only thing apart from that it gives you smoothness it gives you blur it mattifies but then it doesn't really in my opinion from the experience that i have by now um extend the longevity of the makeup and on the foundation and i don't know if camera is able to pick this up but i can see the wear right over here it's just like the foundation kind of disappeared and kind of uh, sat into the pores I don't really know if you can see it and from the nose as you can see I think from the nose you can see there was no grip and that was the problem it is so smoothing and so blurring that there was no no grip so the foundation disappeared from the nose and just kind of sat in the pores this is not that's something that I like if I like foundation that wears off I like when it wears off gradually and it's kind of wearing off but it's uh, it doesn't hurt my my eyes you know when i look at it this this side was good but this side was kind of wearing off so um the the, the primer was just basically sm uh, smoothing and blurring but it kind of misses that kind of a grip to the foundation my opinion is paris star channel gives a green light to the hourglass vanish airbrush primer for me it's a standard silicone primer there's nothing mind-blowing and if i would like to uh, recommend you something that is better in my opinion it would be the one from the dior and it's dior forever velvet veil this one is filled with skincare it, it protects my skin um it, uh, it gives me a little bit of a skin caring properties and it slightly blurs my skin so for me personally i prefer the dior uh, forever Vel velvet veil if i would have to compare it with the one from from the vanish for me it's a just a typical silicone blurring and smoothing primer and that's it good when it comes to the foundation from hourglass hourglass vanish stick foundation uh what's what's your name <laughs> i need to i need to make sure that i'm talking uh what am i talking about hourglass seamless finish uh, foundation seamless finish foundation stick seamless finish foundation stick so when it comes guys to this foundation paris star channel gives an orange light why basically when it comes to ingredients 
the presence of the BHT. We spoke about it. I told you about my own personal opinion. I guess we've established that what I wanted to 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 pass you this kind of an awareness about the ingredients. When it looks how it performs. Um, I suppose the foundation from the veil, the tint, and the foundation from ambient performs better than this one. Doesn't mean that it performs bad, but it doesn't perform to the point when I can recommend it. Okay, when I can actually say, okay, I'm gonna sign my name, it's perfection. Because as much as it, he, from here, from the distance, it looks really very good. I can definitely see some sort of a wear right over here on this side when it basically kind of disappears and kind of settles down in my pore when I have most of the texture and I don't know if this light at this time of the day camera can actually pick this up. So good coverage, medium coverage, very sophisticated undertones you definitely have to make an effort to to look for the good undertone but eventually it is not bad it is not bad it's just the performance is not as good as the one from the ambient collection as the one that's the tint from the veil collection this foundation is okay and only okay so guys, for me, when it comes to how it performs during the course of time and because of the ingredients list and the presence of the BHD, my own personal opinion is as follows. Paris Star Channel gives an orange, an orange light to the Hourglass Foundation. Good. When it comes to the Hourglass Concealer, guys, allow me to approach and once again I'm looking at myself in the camera and I don't see that the camera is actually picking this up because of the studio lights. Um, once again this area has been set and I don't know if you can see it there's certainly a certain wear. My under eye, my under eye area is definitely super difficult and despite the fact that I prepared my under eye area really very well it didn't hold the time. As you can see, I can see fine lines and wrinkles and some crackling and whatnot. It definitely looks better in the area when I did not set it. And the creasing is definitely minimalistic and looks nice. It looks good, but it doesn't look mind-blowing like my favorite concealer, which is Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclat High Cover, which looks undetectable. My personal problem with this concealer is that it is detectable. It is visible. You can definitely tell that I'm wearing something in my under eye area. So my question is, do I need to wear a concealer to conceal some things when the concealer itself is visible? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, you know? For me and for my personal taste and for my age, because I, have, I am over 40 years old, my skin is normal to dry my under eye area is definitely wrinkly and very difficult. This is the concealer that I would not advise for the mature skin because it ages me. It covers, absolutely. The coverage is very nice. It is this very pigmented concealer. Everything is over here, but then by the end of the day, it ages me. It's a concealer that as a, it's a makeup -y and it's visible in my under eye area. And for example, in comparison with Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclat, Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclat does not do that. It's just undetectable and fresh and luminous and it doesn't give do any surprises to me. This one didn't work out with the best powder, which was the Pat McGrath Labs. And it kind of worked out uh, on its own, but still, as I said, the concealer itself is detectable. So I don't need to conceal anything if the concealer itself is detectable, if that makes any sense. Nonetheless, for the face, I suppose, and if you are young and you don't have to bother with any fine lines and wrinkles in your under eye area and basically your under eye area is not problematic, you might love this concealer. So I can't be mad that it didn't work out for me because the formula is actually very interesting. For me, it just didn't work out. So for me, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the Hourglass Concealer. It is a good concealer, but it's not mind-blowing 
and eventually this is how it looks like by the end of the day after more or less of 10 hours of wearing it. Good, guys. Another thing that I would like to talk about, the ambient powders. The ambient powders, you cannot go wrong with these powders by the end of the year or any, t any part of the year because uh, Hourglass has its own exclusive launches that you can participate and buy. You cannot go wrong with these powders. There are beautiful finishing powders, beautiful blushes, highlighters, bronzers, everything at one. And then this is how it looks like. It is radiant, but not oily, glowy radiant. It is like natural ra radiant. And now you can see it's uh, the light. Because of the light, it's bouncing back. It looks really very pretty and very luminous. So for me, when it comes to the powders, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the ambient powders. And now, guys, when it comes to the lip oil. <laughs> what an interesting tool, guys. Allow me to show this once again. There is a button right over here. You press it and the oil squeezes. <laughs> and then the applicator. This is actually a metal applicator. And it is so pleasant. It is so nice and pleasant. I like it. I mean, okay, a little, a little bit of a distraction. Of a, of a distraction. Um, but mm, I absolutely love it. You have to wipe the applicator after because there is a little bit of a mess and the taste is a little bit strange, a little bit minty or whatnot, but then it's not sticky. There is some sort of a plumping and nourishment that I can see on my face. There is a little bit of a color that comes to my lips and I like it. I really like it, if not even love it. So when it comes to the packaging, the application and the product itself, I think it's a very nice product. Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the super luxurious lip oil. And then when it comes to the tools, guys, when it comes to the tools, when it comes to the brush, the foundation brush, the kabuki brush, it is a very nice brush. Do you need it? Is it one of the ne ne completely necessary brushes? I don't know. You have to answer this question for yourself. For me, it is a brush, okay? There's nothing mind-blowing about this brush. But nonetheless, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the foundation brush from the Hourglass. When it comes to the concealer brush, this is a completely different story. It's very unique shape, as you can see, applies concealer really very nicely. It mimics a little bit like something like a finger and there is some sort of a heaviness, which means it is a very nice brush to hold absolutely perfect. So when it comes to the concealer brush from Hourglass, Paris Star Channel gives a green light. When it comes to the precise brush, guys, this is another love, another heaviness in the here in the handle. This part is heavy. I don't know what they did with it, but when it comes to the precision, to setting, love it, love it, love it. You can get anywhere you want. So this kind of a number 14 brush, the precision uh, setting brush, Paris Star Channel gives a green light. And then when it comes to the last brush, which is the Veil brush from the Veil collection, it's, it's incredible. It's a lovely brush, a double-sided brush, but basically you have two brushes in one. This one is very precise. This one is fluffy for pressing the powder and eventually putting the powder all over your face. It's a love. And for me, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the Veil brush from Hourglass. Guys, whew, and that would be all. I guess that was quite a journey. Three episodes when we reviewed the collections from Hourglass, the Veil collection, the Ambient collection and the Vanish collection. I guess in the future I would like to make another episode, but the, really the last episode, when I'm going to summarize everything about the Hourglass products and provide you the information about the best products from the Hourglass when it comes to primers, when it comes to one of the three foundations, when it comes to the blushes and everything and put everything back together. Uh, to show you how the whole 
all the collections binded all together will work because right now we have divided the episode into single collections but I think uh, about making one last episode about combining all uh, collections together and show you the result. Guys, in the meantime, this episode has come to an end. Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you so very much for tuning into my channel and celebrating with me diversity. Because diversity makes us all different, gorgeous and beautiful. It's time to say goodbye. See you in the next episode. But as for now, guys, kisses and cuddles. Take care. Bye bye now.